Okay, so now we want to bring in some data, and there are a variety of ways to do it. If you're in one of my classes later on this semester, I'm going to show you how to just bring in your own um, GeoJSON data and basically visualize it that way. However, oftentimes there's no need to do that. Quite frankly, there are plenty of visualization tools online now. And one of the coolest things about Leaflet, and one reason that I think it's become so popular, is you're basically able to take tile sets and, and data sets from other places and import them with very little fuss. And a lot of other companies now create APIs that work with Leaflet so that you can just bring their data right in over your own tiles and, and basically have all the controls and features of Leaflet. And one of those is CardoDB. Now CardoDB is not, well, it might be open source, but it's definitely a for-profit company, but I really love them. They're doing really cool things to make good visualizations easy for the masses. So what's not to love? So let's, um, if you don't have a CardoDB account, I highly recommend you just create one. Particularly if you're a student, I think you get a really good deal about how much data you can have, etc. And what I'm going to do here is I have um, a couple different visualizations going on, including a watered-down death one. Hmm. Seems to be a theme. So what I have is I uploaded a CSV file that I downloaded from, I don't know, Reporters Without Borders or are those doctors, whatever. But... Um, it has latitude and location of a bunch of drone strikes. It tells you how many people were killed, how many kids, how many buildings were blown up, etc. And honestly, I have no idea how accurate the data is. It seems like the reporters that reported it were pretty worried about consistency, so they have maximums and minimums. But I know you should know your data. You definitely should, particularly if you're trying to tell the truth. But this is a demo. So let's go to map view. And there's a lot of stuff you can do in here, but basically one reason I do really like um, CardoDB is they make editing info windows insanely easy. So let's go here to the info window thing. And you can change it for depending on hover or click. Um, you can change, uh, I, I tweaked this using code, so basically there's a nicer user interface, but basically I decided that I want to show the place of the strike, the total killed, etc., etc. But let's say we don't actually want individual strikes, because really this is just a dot map, and I saw one in the Wall Street Journal a couple of years ago, so this is, this is nothing new. Let's go and to the wizards, which I just get a kick out of. And we can try to represent this data in a variety of ways. If any of you in my class use a rainbow heat map, you'll fail. But let's go to density map like this, eh, maybe not the best, it's not exactly um, smooth or, or continuous intensity. That's kind of cool. So um, basically showing intensity. They have animation. Please don't do this. Please don't ever do this. Um, again, the heat map, which obviously I have issues with. But a variety of different ways you can represent this, and it's pretty stellar. Here's one, for example, their coral pleth, and we can change it to number killed. So, wait, this isn't coral pleth. What the heck did I click on? God help us. So, we don't want latitude, but um, maximum civilians killed. All right, not too bad, except for these places. You can change it. I like that they call it buckets, but that is a little bit um, wimpy. But basically classifications, you can change the color things, whatever. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Um, but this one has info windows. It's Coral Plus representation. We can um, turn different options on, etc. When you're done, hit share. And voila, CardoDBJS. We can copy this. Now, there are a couple ways you can embed this in a site, of course. You can embed it as an iframe, which is fine if you're, you know, just doing that and you're a web developer. You can design it all in here and whatnot. But if you actually use the um, GeoJSON that it exports, the JSON, basically we can use their API, Carter API that works with Leaflet, and we can do really cool things with it. So let's copy this link. And then... What we're going to have to do is, yes, 
I know. It's crazy. Oops. Hit read more. We have to basically link to CardoDB's JavaScript library. And here it is. Whoosh. We'll just copy that. And I know I just told you to link to leaflets, and that's very important if you're not adding another library, but CardoDB, as far as I can tell, has incorporated all of leaflets' um, library into their own. At least it took me about, I don't know, three days to figure this out. But if you have leaflet imported and CardoDB, it won't work exactly how you expect it to. And if you just have CardoDB, leaflet works, and the CardoDB API works. So I'm pretty sure that CardoDB has the Leaflet API built into it. So I just deleted the Leaflet API, and we will use the CardoDB API. And let's hit Save and see what happens to our map before I go any further. Wait. What happened to my preview? Give me my preview. You've got to be kidding me. Okay, so it's still working, even though I deleted the leaflet API, so it, it, does, it is true. All right, but nothing's changed because we haven't added that drone strike visualization to the map. So well, how do we do that? Basically, you can scroll down. Uh, we don't want to create a visualization from scratch. We want to add CardoDB layers to an existing map. And so it's... It's, it has some API methods for doing this. If you keep scrolling down, it says leaflet integration, view source code. All right, looks good. Um, CardoDB, create layer, blah, 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 a bunch of when done, log errors, etc. This is what you need. Notice we're going to go to our, so we add the tile layer. And then I copied and pasted this. Um, this is not my file. I copied and pasted this from a tutorial page. But what is my data is this one here. Looks horrible. But copy, paste, CardoDB, dot create layer, add to the map which here's our variable map. This data, which is the drone strike data and all of that stuff designed the way it is. It's a JSON file, which we'll talk about later in my class, but basically it's a JavaScript object notation file. So it's JavaScript add to map. Okay, let's do it. Let's hit save. And let's hit refresh. Now, hopefully this actually worked. Got to go over to Pakistan to find out. There it is. So, of course, you'd want to center on Pakistan first. And let's get rid of this silly thing. Whoops. But do the info windows show up? Hey. I'm supposed to get some info windows. Well, they're not showing up. Something's funky. But we'll, we'll play with that. Um, it might just be require re-exporting. Or it seems to be mad about something. Regardless, though, we have our data in this map, and this is a pretty stunning success here. So we now have data that we uploaded to CardoDB and visualized in CardoDB, and we've brought it in over, notice, a very different base map. This is the acetate base map, or acetate, you say tomato, I say tomato, and in CardoDB, it's over this base map. This base map might be better. You can probably actually link to it to here. I think it's probably a here maps one. No big deal there. If we want to switch, let's do density, share, copy this, go here, tweak it, hit save. And we're going to actually uh, tweak this too. Let's make this. 72. Wow, that was a good guess. So 72 East is Pakistan. 
All right. What's kind of cool about this visualization is as you zoom in, um, it breaks it down more and more. Um, so basically, it's that easy to create visualizations and put them here. So let's go back to Leaflet and get rid of this silly zoom bar here because I really don't want it. So this will be under controls, I believe. Right, we don't want tile there. Creates a control with the given options. Eh. We should just be able to get zoom control true. No. So under map, when we created our map, we can get rid of this. Um, let's get rid of that. Oh, well, all right. We'll keep the attribution so no one sues me. But zoom control false. Let's see what happens over here. It's gone. So you can do this with a variety of things. If you really want to tick me off, you'll add panning arrows. All right. Um, so we can basically, uh, let's see if we have scale bar. No, no. Oh, controls, scale. L control scale add to map. All right, let's try it. There it is. Scale bar down there. Now, how can we move it? Position bottom left. See control positions. Say uh, bottom right. Help, the kelp. There it is, bottom right. How did I figure this out? Well, basically, you'll notice that there was scale and then two parentheses, and in this, we can give the parent uh, the scale bar properties. And then in the documentation, I create a scale bar and it says put your options in here. Options go in mustaches. It's almost like an object. So basically I uh, made a mustache. I wrote position colon and top left, I guess bottom right. But if I didn't know for sure, I could click here on control positions and it tells you what they all are. So long story short, play around. You can do so much, but a lot of it just takes exploring. And I've wasted enough of your time with this. Let's do um, a couple more things in the next video, and then I'm going to leave it to your own devices. Choose.